God was with His people as they entered the Promised Land. Joshua and the Israelites had defeated the cities of Jericho and Ai. They made peace with their neighbors, the people of Gibeon. One day, the Israelites came to a place ruled by five kings. The kings did not love God or worship Him. They had heard about God's people and were afraid. One king called to the other four kings in the land. He said to them, help me attack Gibeon because it has made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. So the five kings joined forces and went up with all their armies to fight against Gibeon. The men of Gibeon sent a message to Joshua, help us, save us, all the kings who live in this land are fighting against us. So Joshua and his whole army went to Gibeon to help them. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of the kings for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able to stand against you. Joshua and his army marched all night from where they were staying, and they surprised the five kings' armies. As the Israelites fought, God confused the kings' armies and helped Israel defeat their enemies. The five kings' armies fled. The Lord sent hail from the sky to stop them. The battle was not over. Joshua needed more time to fight before the sun went down. So Joshua prayed to God, sun stand still over Gibeon and moon over the valley. The sun stood still and the moon stopped until Israel and Gibeon defeated the kings. The sun did not set for almost a full day. There has been no day like it before or since. As the Israelites traveled in the promised land, they took over many other cities. God fought for his people and helped Joshua and the Israelites conquer the land God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God gave the Israelites peace and rest from their enemies for many years. When Joshua was old, he reminded the Israelites about all the great things God had done for them. The people said, we will worship the Lord because he is our God. Then Joshua died. Joshua's name means the Lord is salvation. God fought for Joshua and the Israelites, saving them and giving them victory over their enemies. Sinners can look to God for victory over sin and death. 
God brought us salvation by sending his son, Jesus, to die on the cross and rise again. Man, you guys remember last week? You remember how they uh, battled the uh, people of Jericho? It's a little bit different than this week, huh? So before we get into this week, though, let's back up a little bit. You remember when Moses was when they when Moses was still alive and they were going to go to the promised land, right? And you remember they sent in the spies and they sent in two spies, oh, 12 spies and uh only two of them were not afraid. Do you remember what the other 10 were afraid of? You guys remember? There were, it was the giants and they were afraid there was people there that they were scared of because since Abraham, or since Jacob had lived there and moved away when they all went to Egypt, new people had moved into that land. And when they sent the spies, when they went back with Moses, the there was people in there that they were afraid of. And they didn't want to go in and live in that land because they knew they'd have to fight those people and they were afraid of them. And that's why God said, he said, you have to trust me. I promised this to you. I made a covenant to you. So... He said they had to go away because only Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that trusted God. So they had to go back out into the wilderness. And now they've came back. They crossed the Jordan River. They defeated Jericho by, did they fight them? And did they use the Walminator 3000? No. They walked around. They did exactly what God told them to do. Crushed the wall. Crushed the city. And now... That's right inside of the um, Jordan River. Now they're in the promised land. And now they're going to have to fight all those people they were afraid of 40 years ago. And that's what's happening. Those five kings, those are five different kings in the promised land that were fighting them. Now they said some of the other people, those other people were kind of like Rahab was. Remember, if you guys remember Rahab, Rahab trusted in God. She remember, she had heard about God and knew how God had um, taken care of all of the Israelites. So that's what these same people had done. And they asked for help from the Israelites because everyone was, all those five kings were coming after them. And what happened when they were fighting those guys? Do you remember? It was something very different than any other time ever. Did they say did they say what happened? Do you guys remember what stood in the sky? They said, the sun, right? They said the sun stood, the Bible says the sun stood for a whole day. Like way longer than the sun would normally. Normally the sun goes up and it goes down. And the Bible says that day Joshua asked God and God answered Joshua's prayer and the sun stayed in the sky for a long time while they fought all those people and God confused their armies and they beat all of those people in that one battle. And actually, there's a bunch of battles that are going on in, in all of these chapters in Joshua. They fight a bunch of battles to fight a bunch of those people because they're in the promised land and God gave that land to them. So, they have to get everybody out, and at least all the warriors, all the armies, they have to beat all the armies if they're going to live there. And that's what they do. And then they split up the promised land between, uh, well, how many sons did Jacob have? Remember, there's the 12 tribes of Israel is the same thing as the 12 sons and their families of Jacob. So there's 12 sons, so 12 tribes, but two or uh um Joseph has two sons and his one son Manasseh gets two of the areas. So they split it up in 14 different sections and they all go and they start um, 
setting up their own families and their own towns and that and those end up becoming those 12 tribes they all go in their own separate ways and they um start building their um they're going to start building their land and this is where we really learn this is actually uh I know I've, maybe I've said it to you guys before, and that's kind of, we're just at the beginning of the Israelites. Like God chose them, them specifically, to show the whole world and everyone in history and everyone from that point on to show who God is. And he chooses them to show himself to the world. And we really start here that now they're in the promised land. Now the Israelites get their chance to be the Israelites. And sometimes they follow God, and sometimes they don't. And we go up, up and down and up and down. And it's a lot like us sometimes. We, even us sometimes, we are a lot like the Israelites where we'll forget, we forget that God's in charge and we forget he's the boss and we forget to follow him and everything falls apart. And then we say, please, God, we pray to him. Please, God, I remember you. I, I remember and I want, I want you to be God, not me. And then God comes in and saves us, just like he always comes in and saves the Israelites. And then we, we and the Israelites, we forget again and we want to do things our way. And we, and the Israelites, they, Israelites want to do things their way. And then what happens? Think everything goes good when you do everything your way? And not God's way? No. When does it work out well? When we do it God's way, right? And it's the same thing for, for the Israelites. And we'll learn about that next week. Um, we get some of the ups and downs of the Israelites already. But now they're in the promised land. And we'll, that's a really, really cool story that we get to learn about. That God kept that sun up in the sky for a long time so they could beat all their enemies and God just wanted to show that it was him and he had them beat them a different way than last time but God wanted to show that it was him who helped them uh win so he just put his little uh mark on it oh and he sent the hail to, he sent all the hailstones too I didn't even talk about that so God God had them fight a battle normal way not just walk around the wall but he still put his mark on it a little bit because he wanted everybody to know that God's what was helping them win. And it wasn't just the Israelites. And um, so we'll get into in a couple or we'll get in next week. Uh, we'll get into the next part of the story and we'll move into the book of Judges. And um, we're going to leave the book of Joshua now that Joshua has passed away. And we learn we really start the beginning of the israelites and the jacobites so i hope you guys have a good lesson i hope you are or had a good lesson and i hope you guys are having fun um and everybody's back to school a little bit more now uh, but uh we love you and miss you and we hope to see you soon bye guys